Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Drunk and Disorderly. I am your host, Dre. I am very, very excited to bring back my partner, Erin. Hey! It has been too I miss long. you. I miss you, too. Damn. I'm like... Y'all <laughs> don't even know how tight we are. They don't know. I don't need to know. It's our business. But we're tight. We're tight. We're in close contact. She's got a lot of <laughs> going on and i'm just glad that uh you're finally mulling through and able to get back on the air with us here uh, i have missed it like crazy like um it's my it's lifeblood you miss this odd thing that we do once a week for an hour this weird thing that we do that started in such a fucked up kind of way it started wow so long ago and like two cycles ago kind of like we've been yeah. through Three names, two, three names, a couple production two, two or three names. <laughs> this is like what? This is this is our podcast 3.0. Are we on yeah. 3.0 already? We are. We are 3.0. We still look good though. 3.1. Hi, John. Hi. So yeah, 3.1. There he is. Hi, love. We are joined, so if you guys watch that commercial, I'm super excited about Battle of Brands going on this summer. Scott is here to tell us all about that. I'm I badass, y'all. Start working. Oh, hey, out. yeah. Battle of the Brands, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I had this moment where I had this idea, and it all started with the rhyming of the word uh, battle. No, battle doesn't rhyme with brands, but brands <laughs> rhymes <not>. with <laughs> bands. It rhymes with bands. And I remember when I was growing up and I was a teenager and we were playing in rock bands, it was all about the battle of the bands and when in the battle of the bands to be like, you know what, motherfuckers, we're the best. So we've got all these comedy companies here in town and it's, I wanted to give them an opportunity to strut them, st strut their stuff. I got four judge, four judges. I got four celebrity judges, celebrity judges. Celebrity. Uh, you know hey, what I mean? Trisha, your names you know, I got, I got, I got, uh, I got a representative from the Omaha Entertainment Arts Awards Committee. I've got uh, uh, a known actor and comedian who's doing quite well for himself at this well, point. Wait, you're going to put Angeles. legit people in front of in front of Caleb? And, and I uh, so uh, check it out. And then uh, I got. Um, uh, a news and television personality, and I've got a middle-aged Karen from North uh, West Omaha. Uh, You're putting Caleb in front of legit people and a Karen. <laughs> no, you she's not really him. a Karen. No, she's actually a libertarian. Uh, but she, her job is to book uh, comedians for corporate oh. events. She books entertainment for corporate events. So I figured she would be a good judge as well. I mean, so so Caleb is uh, comedy and chaos. He's going to host it, and we're going to put up comedians. And uh, I got a couple of strong comedians that I think I'm not in it. I'm producing it. This is a G Track Productions thing. So uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to MC. I'm going to master of ceremony the event, but I am not competing in the event. Right, Maggie. Nothing could go wrong there. Look, we rag on Caleb a lot, but he is funny as fuck. If he is funny as fuck. Not heard Caleb. So funny as hell. you guys want to talk about Caleb for a minute? Uh, Friday night, holy Crayola! Oh. Yeah. So uh, we we there. went we we went to this comedy club in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, <laughs> Teehees, and man, the crowd is hot, right? But they're uh, but they're uh, a bunch of college Karens. Oh no! Like so Caleb's good. natural yeah. enemy. Yeah. Did he Caleb's tell the retarded child joke? <laughs> oh, told, yeah yeah so, oh, no. he, so he went there so he was punching the floor you know and uh they just didn't like him and uh he got flipped off he got he got you know, all the all the stuff you expect from a caleb set in a college karen <laughs> environment um yeah caleb's jokes are not snowflake friendly y'all they are not no, but the fuck you got to remember dude they're jokes at the end yeah, of the day the fuck up, Sally, it's a joke there's a sign outside typically above these places that says comedy show. That is your first hint when you're walking in. And you then, want to be uh, sensitive in comedy. Somebody yeah, should have told Richard much. Pryor that shit, right? I should have talked to Caleb to get permission about about telling the story about what happened, but 
Uh, I don't, I don't think th- care. Oh. Yeah, we can only be so detailed because there's possible. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Like so, we told enough. We told enough. Yeah. Um. Uh. No, we didn't <laughs> really. No, we did. <laughs> was, we really uh, did. Uh, okay. but we can mention. We can mention Caleb was in a was in a car accident. We can mention that uh, in a not so good car accident. His car was right. totaled. Um, we can mention that, um, and he's okay. Uh, his passenger is okay, but we ended up spending the night in the ER that night. Um, from we finally got released from the ER at six twenty two a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you know how I was paying attention. Uh, because I, it was 6.22 a.m. And so we got it released, and then we had to drive a half an hour back to the Airbnb, uh, which we had to be out of by 10 a.m., mind oh, you, after spending the, night, spending the night in the hospital. Dude, you should have called and asked for a late checkout. We did. We did, and they gave us till noon, which was cool. Yeah, uh, they gave us till noon, which was cool. Um, I got donuts and coffee, and we hit the road, and we went to Sioux City, and we put on one hell of a show in Sioux City, Iowa. Man, put that on one hell of a show. The show, the show must go on, right? And both those comedians that were in that accident got got back up on stage and and made the best of it. So kudos to those guys for being troopers, man. Right. Um, yeah. So look, though, that's what we do. I think people don't sometimes realize there there have been nights many nights dre that we have come on the show and rolled through some shit when some massive shit was going down yeah right? yep, for sure i mean you know there's been plenty of weeks where we've had a doozy of a monday and or tuesday all or some of us and we just push through it there have been tears in sound check no <laughs> fucking lie usually no me lie I mean, he cries like a bitch. Yeah, well, I teach, I teach small children, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) and not just any small children, not just any small children, other people's small children, man. Yeah, your kids are. Your kids are just big enough to be assholes sometimes. Yeah, it's the age. Yeah, I think after they can breathe they're big enough to be assholes sometimes fifth and sixth grade boys are just nasty right they're just nasty. yes everything's about it's about poop and farts and all it's and they're nasty and they get beef and they throw punches and then they're chill and everything's cool but fifth and sixth grade girls are little fucking demons little demons are catty oh my gosh and they will never throw anything will they Oh no, it doesn't go away. That that girl that, that you pissed off in fifth grade because you like looked at the boy she liked, that bitch still hates you. Oh no, she didn't have a teacher like me that was like, dude, you gotta let it go, man. You gotta let that shit go. Like oh, be no. excellent with each go. other. Six we have one cardinal rule in my class, and it's be excellent to each other. And if you can't be excellent to each other, then you got no place in my classroom. It's Cobra yeah. Kai and Bill and Ted's rule. Bill and Ted, Cobra Kai means Bill and Ted. I love it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's my classroom, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine being in that fifth grade classroom? That's me. That'd be super fun. I'd be so happy. And my kids are learning stuff and they're rocking it. And they're rocking it. That's great. There was, in, <laughs> we're in fifth grade and one of the kids in our class, I'm not going to say his name because we're still Facebook friends and he watches the show, but you know who you are, <laughs> fell asleep during class. And our teacher, who was Mr. McDuff, he walked to the board and said, everyone quietly get your stuff, leave the classroom, go to the playground. So we did. And he pulled the shades and he turned all the lights off and he set the clock ahead. And on his way to the playground, he hit the bell so the bell rang and this individual who i know is watching yes i'm telling your story jumped up and woke up and thought the school day was over and that he had missed the bus and ran out to the front of the school and then ran to the office crying and we were just on the playground having a great time so sorry for your humiliation the rest of us will never forget it <laughs> shit like that when you're little like it, t- it doesn't take much to freak you out and be like oh no. shit, fucked up major and I, I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> right? Right? And there's like, we all sit around and go, huh, why are we so dysfunctional? What well, was shit like that? That's why. Or the teacher that like would slap the desk with the yardstick to wake you up. Oh. <laughs> I'm, that te- I'm the teacher that will, I will come to your desk 
And I will accidentally nudge you. I'll accidentally nudge him, and that usually wakes him up. That's um, a, I don't like kicking or hitting the desk. Damn. Yeah, um, but I wear keys on my belt, and usually they wake up when they hear my keys getting close. So Okay, so I will give you one. Number two daughter had a teacher um, years and years and years ago who um, had a prosthetic arm. Oh, geez. And he would take his arm off and touch her with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> what grade? Uh, like she was like a fresh freshman, freshman in okay, high school. So, take okay. his arm off and put it in her face and lift her chin up, holding it with the other arm with the non prosthetic used to be like stub appendage. And it was traumatic for her. Freaked her the I fuck bet. out. I bet. Like don't was, touch uh, people without their permission. Yeah. And a lot, you know, people are easily grossed out. Like even when I had this thing implanted in my elbow to fix it i couldn't touch this for a good year without wanting to vomit myself and that's part of me yeah or pins when i had those pins in my leg holy shit oh the kind that had were sticking out and you had yeah to sticking feet. out pins yeah it was oh it was, god i'm it so gross it was gross it was so gross That'd be hard to deal with every day for yeah. Know. Dropping a big book on the floor, like don't be that dick teacher, Scott. You don't do that, do you? You don't throw shit and drop books and. Uh, so uh, to, well, <laughs> when you when you mean by drop books, I've been known to take a book and drop it on the table and sit down and go. You know what? You guys think you can do a better job at teaching this class? Someone, please come up here and grab this book and teach this class. I've done that. Oh, before. that's a whole move out of freaks and geeks. I've done that before. But I'm never. But I'm not like a. I'm not going to come up to somebody's desk that's asleep, and uh, you know I don't want to startle them. You know what I mean? But, um, but I've never. No, man. I'm a cool teacher. Like I'm a talker. I'm a lecturer, and they don't like to be lectured. See, I had fifth and sixth graders for a long time, and um, I was really glad to move from fifth and sixth graders to like pre-K and early childhood. To the littles. Well, yeah. I mean, it's messier. Wait. And yeah. now it's like there is there, there is no there's no other individual on the planet than a three year old. Three and four year olds are the rudest little beasts because they're a hundred percent honest. They have no filters. So you they're like, like why does your hair look so bad? No That's filters. An ugly shirt. <laughs> Love you it. look super fat today. What you happened? Look, why are you so fat? Yeah, they will say that stuff. I did the I did the pre kindergarten thing. I taught second grade for a year, uh, and you then grade? I thought second grade was fun. Uh, second grade was pretty cool, uh, but I needed kids that could understand sarcasm. <laughs> and for me, the worst part of uh, twelve and under, the worst part of any of those grades, twelve and under, is the parents. Um, yeah. And so I think I have really good relationships with my parents. And I think that's why I've been so successful this year as an educator. Um, because I've built those relationships and they like we have that 50 50. Like, hey, dudes, like I'm going to give your kids this work and please help them make sure they do this work. And my kids have all, for the majority, I obviously it's a, I have a, I have a classroom. I've got students that are maybe falling behind, but for the majority of my class, my kids are really putting in some quality fifth grade work. You know what you I mean? Have bulldozer I'm, parents. I had bulldozer parents. I don't, I don't have any bulldozer parents. I don't have helicopter yeah, parents. I don't have, uh, I don't have any of those. Um, I'm, I'm pretty lucky uh, in that regard. I think, I think those parents trust me which I think makes a big difference. Being firm in your boundaries with them helps. Yeah. And you're good, yes, right, Scott? Yeah. I've always been good with the kids, like the kid whisperer. I've always kind of been Yeah. like but that. I'm a, I am a Jedi master, so worst case scenario, I just mind trick them. I'm just like, you want to sit in your seat. You want to stop talking. You want to raise your hand for permission to speak. You know, that kind of stuff. So. See, I just never, I, I, I couldn't, I struggled with teaching that way. Like, I'm not all about that authoritarian shit. Like, I'm just not. As a parent, especially when, when daughter number one and daughter number two were younger, right? Before right. they wore me down, before number one son and daughter number three came along. And I was just like, fuck it, whatever you want, right? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> oh, I was crazy authoritarian. Yeah. Well, well told me I was like a drill sergeant with Alex when she was. Oh, I was. I know I was. But I want to continue to have control over her when she gets big, and mm -hmm, I should have, you know, probably continued that. Hi, Mama. Hey, I lost a little control, oh, and then she got bigger than me, and then shit went sideways. <laughs> I mean, no, I was always just like, okay, fine, leave. What? You can leave. You can leave with everything that you personally bought and paid for. Well, that's like two pair of shoes and a sweater. Weird. Huh? You. <laughs> Not my problem. Those jobby things kind of suck, and so do right. those bill bill things. You know, yeah, I don't know. Bills. You though, you do you do you. You do you. I mean, boo. Fuck. Now I look back at it, and I'm like, man, I was a dick when I was a teenager. Yeah, but I worked like I worked all the time when I was a teenager, right? I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a whole lot of choices. Um, I would that part. Now. I kind of overcompensated with my kids, right? Serena's like, mom, I want to get a job. And I'm like, no, be a kid, no jobs. What do you need? Oh God. Right? And I've done the same thing with Amy. Serena so that's interesting. Cause I, it. I've kind of been the same way with my, with mine. My oldest was the same way. And with uh, my, my, uh, my 13 year old, she's talking about wanting to get a job. And I'm like, nah, you don't need to rush into that dude. Enjoy being right. a kid for a little while. Oh, you guys. Like, I'm telling you. Well, I mean, I don't know. Every every kid's different. Every kid's different. I'm I'm working with a lot of kids. I work with elderly and I work with kids. And some of the kids are great, and some of them lack all sorts of common sense. Like this girl the other night is like, I have the SATs tomorrow. It's seven oh one. I need to leave. I'm off at seven, and I'm like. You work in a restaurant. I would have taken the night off if I had a big test in the morning. And right. do you see what's happening here? Do you hear the phones ringing? Do you see the people walking through the door, sitting at tables, or actually wanting food? This is what we do here. This is how we make money. And I'm just, you know, that yeah. I have to say, hey, let's not put the ranch in the warmer because that will make it warm. Warm. Dude, I had to go get on YouTube when I was oh, at the college. It's a dairy product. Yes. When yes. I was at the college, Dre, I had to get on YouTube and download videos how to sweep a floor, how to mop a floor, how to wash a Because I've got these college kids, right? It's an HRAD program, hotel and restaurant management program. And I'm telling, I get, I get all these students and it's apprenticeships, right? They're supposed to teach them to run these, these outlets, these concepts. And, I'm, and they're like, okay, what do I need to do now? You need to go sweep and mop out the walk-ins. You know how to do that, right? Yeah. So I go in to check and they're like dancing with this mop and mop water's on the floor. Where did you learn to mop? Well, Bollywood. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, they don't know. A lot of these college kids, look, be, go easy on them because they don't, a lot of it's not their fault. They've never washed a dish in their life. They have no idea. I mean, I'm just talking, oh, God, I'll, I'll think of another example in a minute. Like, I've had students that thought you bought salt and pepper shakers filled. <laughs> Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you mean I have to fill those? Wow. Some people's kids, man. Right. Can't we just buy the peppers already diced? <laughs> Yeah, but somebody's got to dice them somewhere, and that's an extra cost. So I can't, oh. I can't, I can't teach Common Core and common sense at the same time, Dre. So I don't know what we can do to help I'm you out. To do the common sense at work, <laughs> the common sense life skills that they need. Like, hey, if you have a big test the next day, take the day off. So There's there is a there is a, a correlation though in the generation. There's a correlation in the generation with the implementation of a common core uh, and the lack of common sense. There is a correlation in, in, in between the two because now you've taken some of the child-led aspect out of the education process, um, which I think is important. The child has to lead the education process. If they're, you know, like my kids, like if my students are super into a social studies lesson that I'm doing, but I only have 40 minutes to teach social studies and that's, that's regimented. 
man, it's like next to impossible not to to bleed over. So and when like you to, bleed over, you just do it smart, right? Now you you you, you so you cross curricular in your social right. right. So you cross curricular. So we've been doing that. Uh, with the geometry lessons, like we've been redoing map reading, we've been doing geometry right. lessons on figuring distance and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and the writing aspect, you know, we, I had my kids make taxation as theft pages, uh, posters, protest really? posters, taxation without representation, no taxation without representation, taxation is theft. Yeah. <laughs> oh. They were ready to go out to the streets and protest. Yeah. A pepper grinder would terrify today's college. <laughs> I was just reading that and choked. So Look, yeah. you can say that. You can say no taxation without representation. But if you're 16, your ass is getting taxed and you don't ha have a voice in representation. You have zero representation. Zero. Just saying. Wow. I just, that hit me a little bit. Like it actually like really dawned like, on You can claim exempt, but you're still playing oh. FICA. They can't vote, but yet they can work and get taxed exactly the same way as everyone else. And they have no say in it whatsoever. That is really fucked up. You can enlist in the military at 17 and you can't vote. It's seven. Oh yeah. I knew it was 17. I think. <laughs> John, you can get married at 16 and 14 in Arkansas with parental consent, but they can't vote either. Please. Not even once they're married. Consent. They Please. can get married and procreate, but they can't vote because we don't trust that. We trust you to, you to know, do all this other shit. Create people, but don't vote on what the people we'll do. John was, I don't remember where, where he was walking out of, but it was near an army recruiting place or whatever. <laughs> and the guy asked. <laughs> ah. And John goes, dude, I'm 40. He's like, oh, never mind. Trey, what would happen you. if we set up an anti-recruitment table, right? A D and D anti-recruitment table in front of a recruiting station, and agreed to flash everybody who would just turn around and leave. <laughs> if you'll just not walk in there, we will flash. If you just won't do it, I bet we would win. You flash them, I'll smoke them out. Yeah, done. I bet we'd get a lot of unrecruits that way. We would. We would. I to live like it was probably so you know uh, scott you know where the ice house is they've got that recruiting station right next door oh yeah so oh yeah they run through my neighborhood all the time so they used to run past my old apartment complex i'd be like what's that chanting and they're just jogging they're around around the girl with them and i'd be like yeah good for you my cats fucking hate this you're giving them a panic attack but whatever <laughs> those cadences are not not appropriate for public not the ones we we sang. It would be yeah. No, these it, these guys are are appropriate. The biggest group of them would be like maybe ten, maybe. Yeah. You'd see jogging around like this. This recruiting station is tiny. It's like one tiny little bay in this little uh, strip mall. So recruiting is where soldiers' careers go to die. Yeah. They don't have a lot of hope left. Yeah. It, it, it's that's where they go. Well, you have kind of a dead soul to lie to people. I mean, because there's a little bit of lying that goes into that, yeah? There's a lot of lying that goes into that. Um, okay. So you kind of haven't been through that yourself as being an ex-current military person. Yeah. You know you're lying to these young people to get them to join up so that you can gain, what, notoriety and money? Um, It's not really notoriety and money. It's not like you're going to mm. pull it. No, so you're meeting you're meeting the obligations of your contract with the government. Right. Yeah, you're meeting your obligations, and they probably say you have to have X amount of recruits every month, or you will be removed from this post, and you'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, they're probably not going to find them, but they are going to remove them from that post. And if they remove you from that post, if you if that's already where you landed, right, and you're not you're you're leaving recruiting, like it's shit detail. They're going to like drop you in Alaska somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be shit, yeah. Or Fort Dix, Fort Dix, New Jersey. You're gonna end up right. at Fort Dix. Nobody right. wants to go there. Nobody I, wants to go there. I'm not familiar. No, I had to out process there. Like I was ready to just fucking walk home. I mean, recruiters get bonuses, mm -hmm. but it's not bonuses like that. Oh. No. It's not like like 
high sales commission the quota or whatever uh, they like probably get rep bonuses yeah okay so they get perks and they're bonuses it's, it's perks but it's not great perks it doesn't take much to feel great when you're looking at what base pay is right i don't know yeah, I, I don't know I, I i don't know that's one of those things like i was so close i was so close to going in and I pulled the last minute. Hoo I'm not doing that. Um, I walked out of the recruiter's office before I signed anything. So and, look, here's uh, stuff nobody knows. If anybody watching is considering enlisting, here's all the shit you need to know. Number one, until you get to basic training and are sworn in, you're under no obligation to do a goddamn thing. Don't so listen to any of that shit your recruiter says you have to be on the bus, the fuck you do. Until they swear you in a basic training, you're not actually sworn in. That shit at MEPS doesn't fucking count. You're good. They're not coming looking for you. Nine times out of ten, even after you're enlisted, they're not going to come looking for you. So all this shit about Bull Birdall and he went AWOL, nobody fucking cares if anybody goes AWOL. Like, trust me, I have a whole story about that shit. Nobody fucking cares. They don't come looking for you. It's just the way it works. So there's that. Anytime during your first year of service. You can receive an honorable discharge, and all you have to do is ask for it. It's called an inability to adapt to military lifestyle and custom. Anybody can get out. You just have to ask for it. Now, look, if you're at basic training, you won't Nobody go there two weeks and you ask for it. They'll give it to you, but they're going to keep you the whole six, nine, 13 weeks. It depends on what phase we're in because basic training kind of fluctuates depending on the military's needs. Um, they'll keep you and torture you and give you shit duty. You're going to polish doorknobs and shit. But you can go home. Don't let anybody tell you you can't go home. It's all bullshit. You can leave. Hmm. And you go AWOL and come back. Like, so there was a guy in our unit, Pope. Pope was AWOL for five years. Pope came back to the barracks because his girlfriend kicked him out and he needed to eat. And he tried to use his meal card at the chow hall and they busted him for being AWOL and handed him five years back pay. That's insane. That's until they can out-process you, they still owe you money. Wow. So there's that. Aaron, so I like your vape. It's metallic. It's very cool. What is that? Is that a disposable? It is a disposable air bar because I get like, you can't hardly see it on the, the green. Yeah, it's, it's disappearing. Yeah. It's got to be in front of you. I get I get really, um, really is boring that flavors. This one is a, what the fuck is it? It's an air bar. Airbar Diamond Watermelon Apple Ice. Oh, what is it? Nicotine, CBD, T2? What's going on there? <laughs> this is nicotine because what day is this? The 23rd? It is the 23rd. 323. Um, 32321. You do the what? Of this month, toward the beginning of this month, um, I guess what, the ninth, the, the, the first week of the month, second week of the month? Um, I decided I needed to quit smoking. So it's a lot of these, a shit ton of gum, a whole lot of nicotine patches, um, and a long My friend way who has been to quit smoking for a long time loves the disposable ones. She's got a couple favorites, but she's like, I like the fruity citrus disposable ones. Those are the ones that work for me. She's like, the Nick Salt was too hard hitting. It just didn't, it wasn't for me. And I'm like, you got to find the delivery system that works for you. Thank you, love. First full weekend of the month, John says. What's that mean? That's when I quit. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, yeah. It's have, you, uh, have you tried the CBD smokes, the hemp smokes? No, because I don't want to. I want something that's different enough. Different enough. So, the vape, so the, vape, the vape serves that. Right. It works. Yeah. So I'm otherwise, I know me, man. I'm going to be like, yeah, this is good. But that same store I get these at. So I'm for five years now, four years, nicotine or cigarette free. And I'm three and a half years nicotine free. So like my vape, you see, it doesn't even have any nicotine in it. It's just juice. So I'm all about the hand to mouth, the uh, you know, the inhaling and exhaling, the ritual aspect of it. So those CBD smokes have been like a godsend to me because now I can go stand outside 
with my friends that are smoking and I can smoke one of those things and I, it's no yeah. nicotine. It's not addictive at all. Well, you know, I can't relate to oral sensations at all. Of no. the smoking outside of places. Don't you miss that? Like, yeah. Community like of smokers. It's different. Yeah. No, man. Yeah, it's like, different. I'll still hang out out there. I'll just take this instead. Mm. No, but I'm saying like, we won't do that here. If it's fucking cold, I'm not going outside to vape. Ew. What no. We'll vape right inside, motherfucker. Oh, oh well, yeah. When they come back inside. I'm getting called out. Um, Uncalled for. <laughs> You're sharing too much. <laughs> sharing too much. Oh, come on, guys. Don't do that on our show. Don't hijack the show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. That's funny. That's I'm, funny. Yeah, it's part of it is the oral thing for me, right? So it, it's the hand. Yep. You know, I sucked my thumbs uh, way longer than I'd like to admit. Went through a lot of a lot of orthodonture and denture dental work to fix it, and I'm still. I've always got this in my hand. I sleep with it under yeah. my pillow. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, part of it is it's it's inhaling. It's that that it nature, that, that smoke. It's it's all of that, right? right? So, the, the ritual, the ritual aspect. Yeah. I mean, and that goes back to our to our native roots, man, where our, our ancestors would do that for yeah, relaxation. Yeah, none of ancestors smoked fucking fruit. I don't know what you guys are doing. Smoke some real meat. So look, the bitch is is that right now? I'm not smoking herb either. No flour. No edibles, no nothing, because our governor, even though we have like the most progressive medical marijuana laws in the country, our governor passed. Um, he signed into law using executive order um, this this beautiful piece of shit that he calls the unity bill. Oh. And under that, there are seven career fields where you can be um, fired, not hired, or discriminated against. Oh no! Yes. Oh no! But you can. Okay. One of them is direct patient care. So direct patient care or direct child care, right? Like the two ways that, that I work. Um, yeah. So it doesn't matter how qualified I am or how good my references are. If I piss hot, they can choose to not hire me. If I can't lose my license for it. You definitely need to be on the herb. <laughs> I mean. It just makes but, you better. It makes you a better so here's the thing. I can put it down, call my doctor tomorrow, go get a script for benzos. Yep. Right? I can take gabapentin or I can take methadone and go to work. Yep. Yep. Does but methadone dump you out like heroin does? I, fuck if I know. I'm I have no interest in taking methadone, but it's it's a huge right. page pain management med. Well, that's right? what they go on to. So I'm like assuming that they does something somewhat similar or they wouldn't agree. I would assume, right? So I can take methadone. I can take methadone during my shift. I can take fentanyl during my shift. How fucked up is that? But I can't come home after work and smoke a bowl. No. And you certainly can't smoke a bowl three weeks ago. Right. Right. Because it's still going to be in your system. Now, some of the healthcare companies have gone to mouth swab tests. Okay, so, so that's three days. Know, within a, three days a week, depending on how often you smoke. But still. Oh, are still. they swabbing for alcohol, too? What if, what if no, I fuck tried, no, what if I, fuck what if I tried no, one on gonna... the night before? What if I had a drunken disorderly podcast the night before? I'm good with that, right? I can do right. that. I could go in to work pissing NyQuil and be fine. God, this angers me. Right, but fucking if I smoked two weeks ago, because you know they don't really believe this. Right, they can't. No one is this stupid at this point in time. It's only because of it's federal money. It's exactly. because the feds still Fed keep marijuana legal. on schedule one. So, so you guys, I'm sure you saw the thing where Biden's staff is getting excused if they've admitted to previous marijuana. What about Cami? Cammy laughed about smoking the, the ganj on a fucking national podcast. She's still got her job. She hasn't been yep. sent home. So what look, I'm kind of salty that he's asking him about home. previous he's asking him about previous marijuana use, but he's not asking him about previous acts of pedophilia. No. I'm way more interested in that. 
Or DUIs. Right? I mean, how long did Ted Kennedy serve after Chappaquiddick? After he murdered a bitch? Yeah. But let's not talk about that. No, no. Let's talk about the devil's lettuce and all that. Yeah, that's what it is. Me for madness, mama. You saw our governor. Our governor yes. said that if we if we legalize recre recreational marijuana, we will kill our children. I saw that. Like, yep, I've yeah. died five times this month. It's crazy. Shit. And now I just Look, said that I out have... loud. And somebody's going to snip that and be like, this guy's running for governor. Guess what he just said? And you know what, though? <laughs> <coughs> Look, I have smoked enough more than once. Or, or eaten enough, ingested <laughs> enough edibles more than once. That I was pretty sure I was going to die. Yeah. There is such a thing as too much weed. There is. It's I've not been, fun. I've never been there. It feels like it, though. It's Dude, I will get you there. <laughs> you I come visit. Been I've been Challenge there. Accepted. You've been there. But it only feels like too much weed. It's never too much weed. It's never too much, but it feels I've like had, it for a minute. I've, I've definitely had too much alcohol. I've definitely been there. Yeah, but too much alcohol can actually kill you. Exactly. It only it's feels true. like too much with tea. With too much weed, you just you you feel like you might die, but there's really no risk. You can just go lay down and be okay. and cry. You can go <laughs> up in the fetal position on the bathroom floor and go, oh God, oh God, oh God. That's what you do. It's usually yeah. a sativa, never yeah. an indica. Yeah. Oh, so the Iowa convention is coming up. We had Dan on last week, and Iowa is April 16th. I cannot wait. I'm coming for you guys. You guys, oh, my God, I love you, but they had me drinking fucking hard alcohol at 3 o'clock in the afternoon last time, and I'm interviewing Joe Jorgensen at like 9 great. talking about <laughs> shiny hair, three sheets to the wind, kissing Joshua Smith on the cheek during the interview. Couldn't be more embarrassing. I think I those thought are it was wiped. great. I was so proud of you. I think those are all wiped, but I uh, will see uh, if Kate, how Caitlin is. Uh... <laughs> anyway, I can't wait to go back. Uh, we only go just because it's such a fucking fun party, and it's right there. It's you know within three hour drive. What is that? The convention is this weekend. You guys should come down. April sixth. Mm. This weekend. Yeah. Oh, holy shit! No days. I can't yeah. Damn it! We're doing the March Laughness show on Saturday night. I'm sorry. We we are we are previously yeah, are, engaged. Scott. Yeah, the March Laughness, uh, putting on a comedy show, comedy will and chaos. You do that, and I will hang out with Spike. That'll be good times. That'll um, be good times. Yeah. You might mention to Spike that that there's this really cool dude running for governor in Nebraska, and he's met him. And uh, if he wants to hook up with him, you could connect the two. That would be cool. I mean. I could, maybe. Maybe I was his MC, and I was on Team Supreme, so that counts for something, right? I was in Just charge DM of zombie him. preparedness. I was in charge of the zombie preparedness team. Just DM so my, him. I, okay, okay. I'll do that, and he'll respond to it, which is awesome. He will. Yeah, I know. Spike about that. Like Spike is so responsive. No matter how big he gets, he's like, dude, he's, and it's him. It's not somebody on his team. Right. No, no, it's right. Spike. God, I love that guy. Yeah. It's usually Brian. Is Brian still watching? Just message Brian. Brian's I don't know who Brian is. I don't know who Brian is. Dude, do you live under a rock? We need to hang out more. Fucking well. Moses. Fucking COVID. We need to travel. We need to get together more than fucking once every three yeah. years at this point. It's been a long time. Do you guys remember our first our first meeting? It was in Omaha. Yeah. First time we all actually met. Yeah. That was Omaha. That was Omaha. We should meet in Lawrence. Is that halfway between? A fuck if I know. I'm not okay. high. How am I supposed to think when I can't smoke? All what right. I don't know what's halfway between. What Where city? are you at? You're, you're in I'm Oklahoma in Stillwater. City. Stillwater. Stillwater, which is like. So, yeah, Lawrence would be a, about halfway between the two. All right. I'm looking it up on the map now. Y'all, who's been watching the basketball tournament? 
Mm. No. Are you kidding me? Nope. Listen, Oral Roberts University beat Ohio State. The really? Ohio State. Suck it, Ohio State. That's fantastic. You got beat. Ohio State got beat by born again virgins. Uh, yeah, you know why? Chun's in there clapping his ass off. Because those guys, those guys, those Christians, they're not wearing masks at practice. They're not. They're not. They also have to resistance. sign a contract. Look, I, I, um, I applied and was accepted to ORU many, many moons ago. You have to sign a contract that says you won't smoke, you won't drink, you won't engage in premarital sex, you won't. Yeah, they're super the healthy. They're super no, healthy. They all yeah. kinds of tension that they need to let out. Yeah. Jesus Christ. If you get caught masturbating, you're you're expelled. So these guys have got all kinds of tension. <laughs> Wait, uh, where is this? Oral Roberts University. <sighs> yeah. Is looking in on their classmates to see if they're rubbing one out. Oh Dude, my god. Check like, nothing is, don't have a beer. Nothing is private there. Like, like you need to leave room um, between you and everything for the Holy Spirit. Holy shit, mind your business. Uh, now we know why this bitch did not attend school, even though the offer came, right? But they heard you if you, uh, uh, you know, and if you're out there right now and you're thinking to yourself, man, I really need to attend a Christian university, but I don't want to go through all that problem. I recommend Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona, private Christian university out of, out of Arizona. Check them, check them out. Cause they're, cause they're cool. Not a sponsor yet, but they should be. I mean, look, if you're thinking to yourself, I really need to attend a Christian university. Um, are you are you watching this podcast? Right now? <laughs> yeah, I think I want to know why the fuck you're watching us. Well, the problem is we have that effect on people. We have that effect on people. They're like, well, this is way too dirty. Maybe I need to pray to God for forgiveness, right? It's <laughs> dirty. Like after hour shows. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have not done an after hour show in forever. Mm. We haven't done an after hour show in forever. <laughs> I can't remember the last one we did. It's probably been over a year. Easily. Oh man, we have to we have to talk about that and figure out how that happens. I mean, our holiday special ran like three hours long. It was a long episode. That was, that was so fun, though. We had so many good guys come on. Yeah, guys and gals. That was good times. Oh, speaking of which, okay, so this is another note. Yeah, let's talk about who's coming up, though, too, since we're who's back. coming up? We have his uh, first name, Trent. He's a big boy, so I'm not actually sure of his last name, nor if I was, would I put it out there. But Trent he's is from the Redacted Caucus. Yes, he is forming the Redacted Caucus. They are putting on a, um, a rally in Austin, Texas, I believe, on the 16th with Dan Berman. And we will be having him on the show on the 6th to talk about that and all those nice. initiatives. They're working on, it looks like a ton of cool, cool stuff that uh, yeah. everybody that watches this show would be super interested in. Nice. So we've got good guests coming up. Oh, and we have a pedo hunter coming up from Florida. He lives in Florida. Him and his wife are a team. They pose as young girls online. And then once they entrap someone because they can do that they're not the cops um yeah. they turn over the evidence to the police to pursue and wow. guess what else? not only can they do that but you can do that everybody with a computer you can hunt pedos too so if you find yourself with too much free time tune into that episode learn how to become a pedo hunter because we're all about that because if there isn't a class to be protected that isn't the children i don't know what is protect the children please Children are seniors. Yeah, and the elderly. On the elderly, yes, for if sure. You, you can't fend for yourself because of your physical or mental capacity. Yep. That those are the people that need our our help. I think in our um. Yeah. And look, yeah. guys, we're not talking about people that you, you just think are off, right? Because that's like half our party. Right. We're talking about people who clearly cannot defend themselves. Yes, those people who have not are never going to develop to a. Not those people who are batshit crazy, right? 
these are different things. Right. And we're also not talking about um, the female that's 17 going on 45 with seven different fake IDs who goes to bars to try and entrap celebrities a la Rob Lowe, right? Yeah, she doesn't count. We're not count. talking about her either. She's she on count. her own. She doesn't count. Bitch is a predator on her own and in her own right. Oh, absolutely. I didn't hear about that. You're going to have to circle back. Dude, I don't Rob Lowe. So Rob Lowe, the actor, is at a hotel. Is this weird, to- weird, like 80s, 90s? Yeah, yeah. Goes to the bar in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Yep. And is ordering drinks, talking to a female at the bar who is drinking. They strike up a conversation. He's like, hey, I want to go back to my room. And she's like, no, let's go back to my room. He goes back to her room, the room she shares with her mother that has a fucking camera already set up in it. That he doesn't even know is set up. Nails this chick. It's all on video. She's a minor. He goes to jail. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I that, shit, that shit happened. That is some bullshit. Look, I did pageants and they'd always bring in like celebrity judges. And that was the game. What? Trying to entrap that was them? the game. Who can nail who could fuck the celebrity judge? That was the game. Mm. But it's a game for these girls. God, that's so disgusting. I understand her and her mother probably, he was a famous person there, probably trying to extort money. Yeah, I look, it's bigger than that. Like, my child in that position. So, look, like, she, the mother is absolutely vile, right, for taking part in this. But, like, in this girl's defense, I was that bitch. Remember, I told you guys if you had known me, like, in high school and early adulthood, you would have fucking hated me. I hated me. That was me. I was that chick. I would pick up guys in bars who were much older than me on a fake ID. It was, it was, it, that's, it's what I did. But you wouldn't do it to entrap them, would you? No, I didn't do it to entrap them. And, and I had this thing in my head that, like, I would never, right? <laughs> That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that my intentions weren't nefarious. What happens if we're on the way to a different hotel or his house and we get stopped by the cops? Right. What happens if he's speeding? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's going to put him in a very bad position, but. Yeah, and a couple of these people were people with, with some celebrity and one of them found the fake ID and found my actual ID and lost his fucking mind. And I could not figure out why he was losing his mind. Well, because I could have cost him his entire life. Shit. Right. Uh, So the Rob Lowe thing was 1989, late eighties. Oh, Maggie Maggie was right. Maggie was right. Late eighties. Yeah. That's why I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this shit happens, but we have this mindset Right. When we talk, when when we talk about these things, when we say, well, she was 16 and he was 28 or he was whatever. And how did he not know? Details matter. Details matter. I'm sorry. If you're at a bar and there's another person at the bar getting served, it is fair to assume they're 21 or over. Right. Right. Yeah. You're not the bouncer at this bar. You're a patron. You'd think. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about any of that. Not yet. Anymore. Yeah. No. I mean, Person, well, on a personal level. Yeah. On a personal <laughs> level, I don't have to worry about that happening to you me. You say that, but you have kids. That I yeah. Have, that's what I'm saying. Well, I do. On a personal but, level, yeah, he doesn't have to worry about it for a couple of years, but in a couple of years, he's got both sides to worry about. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. But I think I think both of my littles are are smart enough. And they got good solid heads on the shoulder. They'll figure it out. Yeah. So, well, my problem was I was too smart. Yeah. So watch that too. Um, I was also feral though. Like your kids are not feral. I was feral. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. my kids are not feral. No. Are beyond the the opposite of that. But you have to like protect Alaric from people like Cardi B. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, that's a whole nother set of issues that you have to have him set up for. Like, shit, I would have never thought years ago if I had 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 a boy. Listen, 
don't do you know be just super careful and don't go home with strange strippers who have no money and are desperate and want to rob drug and rob you for everything you <laughs> dude rolling guys like that has been happening since the 50s that will never happen to my son my son will be smart enough to spill and set up a fucking mile away i'll tell you that right now yeah so look like scott props to you because honestly in today's society I would not want to be a male teacher at at any level above third grade. It's hard. It's 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 definitely a challenge. Um, but like, at the I same noticed time- that we pulled in high school. Like, uh, Mr. Hughes, if you're watching, I am so sorry, so sorry, Coach Hughes. <laughs> at this this teacher taught geometry and biology, and because he was co- a coach, he was always in his little gray shorts, and we thought it was funny to try and get a literal rise out of him in high school, right? That was the game. You bitches. Oh my We were bitches. We were. What did you do? Like it was it was like sitting you'd sit in the classroom and try and flirt with the teacher. That's so awesome. Did it That's ever so- work? <laughs> I flew, he stayed behind his desk a whole lot. Poor guy. Oh my God, so it did. I mean what are you gonna do? Oh my I god mean, what was it? You know what he, you know what he's gonna do? He's, you know what he's yeah, like, he's gonna sit behind his desk until he figures it out, and then, <laughs> then he's gonna stay behind his desk. Look, he's gonna he yeah. have the dress codes that you guys have now, right? It right, was like right. the late eighties, early nineties, and we yeah. were not a whole lot of anything other than eyeliner, right? Yeah, and too much yeah. hairspray. Um, yeah, yeah. Our teachers were set up to fail. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's really hard being a male in this industry, but I think again it comes down to trust and I think people trust me and I think that I, I think I'll be fine. Uh and I don't do anything too stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maggie, exactly. Don't stand so close to me. That was exactly the thing. Like yeah. um I like I know like some of the motherfuckers watching this. We all went to middle school and high school together. Y'all know the shit that we pulled. Like, come on. Yeah. We were troublemakers. We were. Yeah, of course you were. You're still a troublemaker, dude. I'm not a troublemaker. <laughs> I'm just, like, I call shit out now. No, but, man. but there's no reason. Like, there's no reason to to lie about this. And every time I see this, like, I'll, I'll see a case where it's like a male teacher with an 18 year old student or a 17 year old student, and people want to crucify him. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, she, I know how hard did she come on to him? Like, yeah, shitty, shitty circumstances. I'm sure surrounding the whole thing. Right. Right. Yeah. I you know, and then you and then you do you see the flip side of the coin though, and then you've got the predator predator aspect, right? You know but here's mean? the thing: that the assumption is always that the adult is the predator, and right. I'm telling you that is not the case. True, and that's, that's not always the case, and that's why I fucking hate these zero tolerance policies. Like, look at every single case on exactly the details and what happens. Like, why should we have to teach? Uh, administrators about the nap first of all right Second of all, why aren't these case taken case by case like are you that lazy that you just oh just zero tolerance if there's a hint of this then everybody's in trouble and fuck it then right. let me i've washed my hands right we want to scream about this shit we want to hold people accountable but then at the same time we put dress codes into place in schools that promote rape culture Right. Boys are not responsible for their feelings because girls were showing too much shoulder. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, that's bullshit, right? And if you think teenage girls don't go, ooh, that means I have some extra power, you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. It's bullshit. That's why I'm glad my teenage daughter is non-binary. That's <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Let's hope she just... Well, you know what, man? As long as she's happy, right? She's happy. So I feel, happy I feel and, and safe, and safe, and I feel supported. And uh, we're doing everything we can as a family to support her. And uh, do you feel like the community is supportive of of her as a non-binary individual? Uh, so I think her age prevents that community from taking her too seriously at this point. 
Oh, if that, she she's 13. Okay. And when, when was this decided? But when, yes, those, those, those people, it's been about a year and a half now. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is I'm hearing of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, and she doesn't <laughs> mind me talking about it, um, okay. at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's her thing and she, she seems comfortable with it and happy with it. And that's all we can do is su support her. So I think, uh, overall the community, the people that I know in the community have been very open and welcoming to her. Our family's been very open and welcoming to the whole circumstance. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, it's a way she, she's surrounded by a bunch of people that love her, love them sorry and uh want want them to be happy so so like they aren't a different person than they were they're not at the all. same person that you loved yeah you just have more information about about them as an individual um and i think yep. that's the thing to get through yeah right when yeah. somebody that you love and care about comes out as 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 gay or bi or pan or non-binary it doesn't change who they are as a person they're still the same person they're just choosing to shoot to share with you an additional detail about their life it doesn't yeah. change who they are in any for capacity sure. for sure i think it's really important to remember that yeah. still the same so person too. that you loved and cared about five minutes ago before this announcement nothing's changed nothing changed yeah. nothing's they changed. Still the same favorite color favorite favorite right. Yeah, they're the only thing cool. that has changed is is your awareness of their comfort level and trust in you as an individual, yep. and you should and see that as as a caveat and as a blessing and not as a negative. That is a Absolutely. really good way to put it. They trust you enough with this information about them, so this very very personal information about right them to entrust you with that and to yeah. continue, hopefully the same way as before. Hopefully, I mean, I don't know, like I get being that person that gets labeled as the enigma, right? Like I get it. Right, right. Right, I'm, <sighs> I'm the bisexual fetishist with autism who also happens to be a libertarian. Right. Like, come on. That's funny. I, not being non-neurotypical is a, is a huge kind of and I fake it okay, mostly. Right. You make it through. You do. You make it through. You're all right. Mostly. Um, mostly. Mostly. There are moments like that's funny. John is so patient. Thank God, um, because I certainly have my moments. Yeah, I'm. I'm so glad the two of you ended up freaking on the same level. Hey, man, that's yeah, cool. John. Jake. Yeah. Jake. He's pretty amazing. I'm pretty. Yeah. Well, I don't go there. I wouldn't stroke his ego. <laughs> he is. Like, you say that, but you, like, no, you have I know. dealt with my shit. I know. <laughs> like, and, both and, of you and, have dealt with my shit. You know it is not easy. Sure. And and for the record, John does not have much of an ego. He has got confidence, but he does, does not have an ego. And I think there's a definite difference between the two. Absolutely. I, mean, I think I think there's a healthy level of ego. I don't think it's an mm. unhealthy level. Um, confidence. That's to me. That's confidence. Still, an unhealthy level of ego is is ego. You know, right. what I mean, you, you label it, you call it what it is. Um, like, uh, and the next level above ego is narcissism, right? So, oh my think, God, what is the deal with the with the increase in narcissism within our circles lately? It's crazy, right? Holy fuck! Like y'all motherfuckers need to get over yourselves. What is this? Holy shit. We got a whole diatribe here. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we do. Oh, that's nice. We, we can put it up. You, yeah, it. put that up, Scott. Put I'll that up it. for the viewers, Shireen. Oh. Yeah. So I, I, I'm a very, William Warren says, I'm a very conservative person. However, when my eldest daughter came out as gay to me, I asked her what took her so long as I had figured it out about a year earlier. She had said she wasn't sure how I would handle it. I told her my faith demands I love her. She is now very open with me and she has moved out on her own and she still calls me occasionally just to say hello. <laughs> we have a great relationship now that she knows I am not going to go all nuts on her. Well, good right. for you. Yeah, there's no Perhaps reason to you, man. Look, if you're watching and you don't have somebody um, 
that you feel comfortable sharing with if you don't have somebody that you can reach out to man reach out to us we're here reach out to us we're super supportive dudes and two dads yeah but stop stop with the mantra that everybody who's bi is really pan like fuck no, off. all right Wait, whatever what's pan i forget pansexual is is similar to bisexual um, but they are not the same identifier. They are very different in many, many ways. Different. Body erasure is real. And as a bisexual woman, fuck every one of you motherfuckers that want to try and erase me. Like, fuck off. Right? Up. Right? I'm not pan. <laughs> not even close. I still don't know what pan is. Pansexual is more of a combination of bisexual and sapiosexual. So it's more about um, who a person is as an individual, regardless of gender. Okay. Got, okay. Okay. So I'm thinking of um, David on Schitt's Creek. The way, he, kind of. the way he described it is, I'm not so concerned about the label on the bottle of wine as much as the vintage in right. the bottle. Wine. Right, as long as it's got a sweet aftertaste and right all that stuff. Look, yeah. that is not me. Like very by, very picky. Um, I clearly have a type. Um, there is nothing wrong with being picky. You can be the greatest person in the world. I I can think your soul is absolutely beautiful, but it doesn't mean I'm going to date you. Um, like I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm a vain bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm picky. And you should be. And you should be. Like I'm picky. It's not, and and that's just that's what works for me. What works for me isn't what works for somebody else. But stop trying to erase people and make them fit your label because it's what you're comfortable with. Right. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but when did it stop being okay to only invite people into your bedroom that you want to? I am. Oh so my God! What is this shit with this? I'm super straight. So, oh what? Like fuck off, dude. What I'm so sorry, I can't have a preference anymore. I'm sorry, this is my body, and only the people that I want to touch it get that fucking privilege. Right? Like you absolutely get to have a preference, and it doesn't make you um, a transphobic. It doesn't make you homophobic. It doesn't make you any of those things. That was nope. so ridiculous. You get the same right to preference that everybody else has. You just do. Look, your rights stop where somebody else's rights start. And if you want to to be able to claim a certain set of rights, you must be willing to grant those same sets of rights to other people. Period. Done. Period. End of sentence. Right? I, mean, I didn't think it needed to be said anymore that not everyone is attracted to everyone, but apparently it does. Well, in cell culture, this is in cell culture continued, right? <laughs> Just, so everyone, everyone gets a. We're we're still suffering from the everyone gets a trophy feeling, right? right. Yeah. But, you know, here's what sucks. Like we got to blame our generation for this, and I I don't know why yet. I haven't put my finger on it. I still think it's the late end of boomers, Xers, which are us, right? Generally, we were the latchkey kids. We fended for ourselves. We figured yeah. shit out on ourselves. We learned that you don't fucking run your mouth because somebody will shut it for you. Yeah. Right? Try not to yeah. write checks your ass can't cash. My yeah. brothers have said that to me a million times. I love you, Curtis. I'm trying to yeah. not write checks my ass can't cash. Um, I mean, that's the deal, right? Um, but on either side of us, we have, we've got boomers, right? And then we've got millennials. Millennials, Xers like to bag on millennials, but we raised them. I won't do it. Yep. We raised them and half of them are our peers. People forget how old millennials actually are. My husband right. is a millennial. He's only six years younger than me. It's not a big age difference. My parents are nine years apart. That's a big age difference. We were almost in high school at the same time. Like he get, Let me get be very clear. Look, every fucking one of us comes into this world naked with nothing. And every one of us will leave this world naked with nothing. And everything that you obtain in between, that's on you, bitch. Like, nobody owes you a goddamn thing. Also, nobody owes you a goddamn thing. Nobody owes you anything, and everything you did is on you. We got our, That part is also very, very, very important. That's that the other thing. I, I am so sick of hearing, I am a fucked up, vile human being because my parents were shitty. Fuck 
off. By the time you were 16, you saw how other people lived. You saw how other people did things. You no longer get to blame your parents. Everything that happened, 16 on, you played a part in. Own your shit. Own your shit. Own your shit. Look, there's a lot of shit that happened to me that I still played a part in, even if I was a victim in that situation. Own your shit. Own your part in everything that has happened to you. And stop trying to blame other people for your crazy ass bullshit. If you're fucked up, do the work and fix yourself. Stop trying to suck validation from the world to fill those holes that you have in you. Like, take a scalpel to that shit. Do the hard work. Stitch it up. Because in the meantime, heads up, you're nothing but an emotional fucking vampire. You're a dredge on society. Like, fix yourself. And you know what, guys? Sometimes that takes time. Give yourself time. Yeah, I give yourself time and ask for help. I am not the same person I was 12 years ago. And there is a reason for that. I put in hard work to mold myself to be slightly different. I'm not all very much different. I'll, trust me, I'm not. But I'm a slightly better person than I was because I tried and I understood what I was wanted to correct. And I worked towards that. Right. Look, there's all kinds of resources. There's all kinds of help. Um, and look, I know a lot of you think that you're being a good friend to somebody when you co-sign on their bullshit. You are not. No, no, no. You're not. Like part of the reason Dre and I are as tight as we are is because like she, she will call me on my shit. Like, I love you, but is anybody else invited to your pity party or is it just you? <laughs> right. Like, right. like right. we call each other on our shit, but we do it with love. And if you, you're not being a good friend, if you're not doing that, I used to have this Amen. very Amen. flamboyant gay friend who, when we would be out in public, we'd see a girl who was like dressed awfully or overweight and like a skin tight thing with bulges hanging out. He'd be like, oh, that's so sad. She must not have any good friends or they would tell her your friends need to tell you. That's what they're there for. Like, and hey, they don't go to the house looking like that. And look, you guys, like the three of us, we went through this, right? We went through this. We had um, a friend and we were all trying to be to like to to tiptoe around shit and not have the hard conversations. And it cost us. It cost us a friendship. It cost us all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Right. So like we're telling you this because we've learned it because it's what we've seen happen. Like have those hard conversations with people that you love and that you care about. Yeah. Do it with love, though. Yeah. Yeah, but do it with love. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. I love it. Don't, Don't be, a, be dick. a dick. Try not right. to be a douche. Right. And if you have to be a douche, <laughs> make sure you have to be a douche. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean. Sometimes we'll you have to be a douche, right? We, we've had those conversations. Like, do we really have to be dicks about this? Sometimes you have to be. But like bounce that shit off somebody else first. Yeah, there's always that option. You Sorry, I, I knocked all my beer bottles over and they knocked my camera loose, Knocking dude. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look, I am like, I don't know if you can see. Oh, oh yeah. Love it. I is love that, it. Is that red wine? What the fuck is it? It's a, it's a Napa Brute. Oh, it's a white. That's right. It, it's, a, it's sparkling. It's It's a... It's a Ooh. California sparkling wine, right? Because technically it's not champagne. Oh, oh, okay. Not unless it's from champagne. Cham champagne. Uh, which is so <laughs> funny because, look, so all the sparkling whites that you get out of California came from grapes from the champagne region in France, right? They bought these grapes. They moved them over. They started bringing them. And then the champagne region in France had blight and lost all their grapes and had to buy them back from California. So technically, it's all California sparkling wine now, right? But, <laughs> um, uh, so we've got a couple more comments. Throw I saw them. Jimmy Mahoney, good fucking point. I think. I love right. you, Jimmy. I think. Well, the extras gave you South Park, Family Guy, 
married with children, and y'all are thin-skinned. Like, what the fuck else can we do? I don't get it. Yeah. We can so, like, great porn, great so TV. Great I music. think here's the, here's the challenge we run into, folks. The, the people that are watching those shows, that demographic that's truly watching those shows, is my generation, the Gen, gen Xers. Yeah, exactly. are, the millennials aren't really, they're aware of it, but they're not watching those shows. They didn't what are grow millennials up with, watching? They're watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians and The Bachelor. What the fuck is wrong Jersey, with you? Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore? Right? Yeah. Oh, God, they're watching reality TV. That's Plathville. right. Plathville. Have you guys right. seen Plathville? They've been watching. No, I haven't. <laughs> but Holy yes. fuck. Plathville or Plathville? TV. Plathville. It makes 19 kids and counting look normal. I'm not watching that garbage. Ew. I almost wrote that down. Fucking don't, don't, don't. Damn it. Now this dude in high school, uh, he took me to his gay bar hangout. It was a pleasant experience. Once <laughs> once he found out he was an ally, right? That's what really makes a difference. That's right. what helped you get welcome. So, um, and you know, and that's one of those things. Like, first of all, dudes, like if you're thinking about going to a gay bar with your lady friends or your gay friends, like go. Um, because like if, if you're homophobic and you're afraid somebody's going to hit on you, somebody's probably not going to hit on you just to be honest with you. Like right. you, you're not that, you're not all that. So you're not all that. <laughs> like if you look like a Brazilian calendar model, like get out, get over yourself. And right? if they do it, it's only to make you uncomfortable because you're being, an, you are obvious, being an obvious yeah. jackass. You're dead. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Aaron, I take it. Right. Like, look, what was the line in um, in She's Out of My League? You can only go three digits either way, right? So if you're a six, the best right. you can score is a nine. <laughs> right? So here's what I see, and I see it in the movement all the time. I see, like, neck beards that are 50, 60, 80 pounds overweight, haven't showered in six years. Okay. And they're like, wow. how come that 10 won't talk to me? She must be a bitch. No, dude, you're fucking gross. You're literally repelling her from across the room. With like, your if you want a 10, be a 10. Or try. At least try. At least put okay. in the effort. You know what? You, I was thinking about this. You know, I say that and like I've got a 10 and I'm my best to hard seven. But think about this though. So say you've got an issue, you know, like you're i don't know impaired somehow physically you step up your game everywhere else so that people don't notice that you're missing half an arm or whatever you know what i mean Wait, look it's not even about that it's about this no. it's about what you work on your personality you work on your your fucking your so heart you work on yourself in what you're doing in life, and then you can find somebody. I'm gonna tell you what, Dre. Look, honestly, how sexy was Stephen Hawking? <laughs> That's funny. Right? Wrong or not, he had fucking groupies. That's yeah. Funny. Well, think about it. I mean, if you're into something, you're gonna dig the dude who is the best at that something. Right. No matter what it looks like. It's definitely a 10. Right. Right. <laughs> so God. I worked I, I worked my way up to about a six, six and a half, and I landed myself a ten. My wife was is a ten for sure. Like, you know there's smoking, a caucus for that. Hot. Yeah. For like libertarian guys with smoking hot wives. That married out of their leagues. Married way yeah. out of their leagues. Swung way above them. There's a caucus for that. There's a caucus for everything in this party. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, Dre's a freaking cradle robber over there. Me too. My wife's 10 years younger than me. Ah, way more Both than Both of you. Both of you. But you guys have to understand, I met John, like, 15 years, like, 10 years before we started dating. So we were friends for 10 years. I was getting divorced. He was getting married when we met. We became friends. We worked together, continued being friends. He got divorced, friends, and then I don't know what happened, and we ended up together one night. You know what, though? I think that's the key. The key is we see, and I see it all the time. I see it all the time within the party and outside of the party. I see these people trying to rush into relationships and rush into, right. into situations. And you guys know, like anybody who has followed our show, I was the anti-relationship 
bitch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Relationships are a trap. It's a farce. Walt <laughs> Disney lied to you. Right. All that shit is bullshit. I got blind. Well, more importantly, and don't more importantly, don't you. get don't dip your ink in the company pen, you know, pen in the right. company. Like, don't ink, don't you eat, 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 right. Don't like, you all eat. that shit, right? Um it, the key is be friends with somebody. Build a friendship. Focus on your friendships. Focus on you. Focus on fixing you. Yeah. And then the I show. was in the friend zone. Two years I was in the friend zone. I waited friend in the friend zone, zone for two years. We it was not a bad place at all. She was a great friend with my wife. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I thought you guys yeah. were. You were, friend, you were in the friend zone. I was in the friend zone. Yeah. Like starting in the friend zone is, is the place, right? That should be the goal. Oh, yeah. This should be friendship. But that's what I found so fucking weird after I got divorced and I dipped my little toe in online dating. So, oh my God. So we start talking online and then we go on a date and that's our first meeting. And we're just either we're dating or we're not. And I'm like, this is bizarre to me. Like I, I thrive on familiarity. Like that's where right. I, I have had my successful long relationship is with people I was familiar with prior to dating them. I think it's so weird to just start dating someone. I feel like tail end of Gen X into millennial generation and Gen Z, right? That's the shift, right? It's if you go out on a date, now you're dating. You're dating this person that you went on two dates with. Nobody right. dates several people. Like, what the fuck? Well, you're trying no. to commit to somebody people, you don't shit about. People were doing that. People were dating like multiple dates, but I mean, like, to meet someone and then you're just dating. Like there was no friendship. There was no right. affirmation whatsoever. It was just like, oh, we exchanged some messages and now we went on a date. And so that's just bizarre to me. And the guys that would be super like aggressive, like, can I hold your hand? Can I kiss you? Like I literally that's met gay. Like go fuck yourself. Right. Like, no, I don't know you. Right. People like, talking about William Warren met, met his wife in a chat room chat room for a couple of years before I freaking married her. You know what I mean? So oh. was it, was it AOL? Was it an AOL chat who, chat room or Yahoo groups? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh folks, man, I lost track of time. We were having such a good time. We're 20 minutes past the hour. I don't know All if right? you guys, if I'm good for hanging out, if you guys want to still hang out for another couple okay, minutes, minute. but uh, we gotta, we want to be mindful. We've had some viewers say, oh, I wish I could stay up this late. You know, but <laughs> look, y'all know how we get. Sometimes yeah. it's an hour, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's tame, sometimes it's not. Like suck the shit up. Yep. And I right. on, so we have a lot actual of IRC. Okay. Sure. Sure. Nice. I don't know what that is, but I don't either. It, so and not that anybody cares, but I we, we should probably say we found a new producer to help us out with our show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, so you're gonna start seeing Start seeing some less of me and uh, some more of our our new producer that's going to be taking over. I'll probably be around for the next few shows to make sure things go off without a hinge. But um, uh, I think that it takes I'm busy, man. I'm running for governor. I'm executive director of the Libertarian Party. I teach fifth grade. I'm a comedian. Like I'm doing all these things and I love this podcast and I believe in what this podcast is doing. But man, such a time crunch to do what we got to do. So, um, like, I'm super excited. We've got somebody that we can trust that can come on board and run the show. Uh, really, you guys tune in for uh, Dre and Aaron. Like, we know, we know that. They are the stars of the show. So, um, I'll still pop in from time to time. And, of course, by popular demand, like, if the crowd demands it, I'll come back, you know. But uh, the reality of the situation is um, – I, I have a good time hanging out on Tuesday nights, getting drunk. I'm still going to get drunk on Tuesday nights, just so you know. Uh, I'm still going to get drunk on Tuesday nights, but uh, I'll be hanging out watching the episode online instead of uh, like, sitting at here. At some it, point, just know you're going to get Dre and I at one of one of Scott's comedy shows. We've got to figure yeah. out our routine, but as soon as we do it, we're going to do it. And, and I got to tell you, Scott, like we're going to bury your other comedians because – we're fine. Yeah. 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 Bring you know, it. 
go to all the comedy shows and I go up on stage when, you know, they're checking the mic and checking the camera, but that's it. That's the only time I've ever on stage. <laughs> like, we would have to do it together to be able to do it and not have a fucking panic attack. <laughs> right? Like, but we that's could do it. Mm. So, <laughs> or maybe we need a joke writer. I don't know. Because my jokes are random when they come. I can't, like, produce them, you know? Like, yeah. it, would be, it would be pulling shit out of our asses. Yeah. It'll, it'll be all right. It, it'll be all right. We'll figure something I, out. I, I, saw, I saw this billboard, right? Billboard says, are you illiterate? Call 1-800-2-READ. Oh, my God. How the fuck are they helping? Who the fuck are you That is your tax dollars at work, bitches. <laughs> oh. oh, man. So I had this idea for a, for a libertarian billboard. I sent it to the state chair in Nebraska, Libertarian Party, and he rejected it. Um, yeah. It says it, it's a cop doing a radar check. And it's, a, it's a, basically a meme. It's a billboard that uh -huh. says, stay free, drive 73. Libertarian Party in Nebraska, right at the very bottom. Come on, Jared, do it. It's perfect, isn't it? Our... It's perfect. Um, tag, tag Jared in this podcast. Jared <laughs> Weimer, do the thing. Let me see if I can find it. I'll see if I can find it. Do the thing. Oh, my God, you guys. I still have tan lines from Mexico. Can you see? I am so sad that I wasn't in Mexico with you guys. We should plan a vacation. We should. It was amazing, you guys. There was more staff on the resort than guests, I think. Meth were on it. Yeah, the whole Montana thing, meth were on it. You guys remember oh, that one, right? Oh, yeah. That was like a year and a half ago, two years, maybe. They should have removed, digitally removed all the teeth of the people on those ads. It would have been funnier. It would have been perfect. Put some black, one like one half black tooth in there. There it I is. Love you. There it is. Yeah. Do you guys want to meet our new producer? Who wants to meet the new producer? <laughs> I'm getting the double bird. <laughs> They're going fuck that shit. He doesn't. Fuck no, I didn't want to. I didn't. I was trying to avoid bringing him on because I know he doesn't want to be on. Um. Uh. Yeah, well, we just I uh, he he wants to be a, a secret, doesn't he? Shh, fine. Shh, 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 shh. I mean, the reality is Dre and I have a whole lot in common, <laughs> <laughs> right? So there's that. Yeah. All anyway. right. Yeah. Our new producer is going to be very, very much behind the scenes, just pushing the buttons and whatnot, because that's the role that he has chosen to take. And right. We both accept and uh, appreciate that. We appreciate that. We love well, and, you. We love so you. And, and that's the thing. Like, we've been through some format changes. And I think one of the format changes that uh, our viewers will appreciate is having Dre and Aaron on the podcast alone with a guest. Um, I'll still be on if there's no guest and you need a third member. I'll still come on. I'll still do my thing on here. I'll still get drunk with you guys and hang out and have a conversation. You know what I mean? It's not a goodbye forever kind of thing, but this is kind of like, hey, when we've got guests, we've got a new producer that's going to be taking over the show. And uh, yeah, I mean, and he, and he wants to be behind the scenes. We respect that. He's going to do a good job for us. I'm super excited about the fact that uh, he's jumped on board. So, you know, the hardest thing about being a producer and handing this role off to another producer is the trust oh. factor. Um, the the trust that somebody's going to be able to do professionally what you want them to do. And I for, though, too, this is the, the individual that the, that has stepped into this role um, volunteered to take like all of the abuse and all of the bullshit and stepped into this role. And we love him for that. He's somebody who has been a trusted advisor for us. It's somebody who we do both trust, who we do both confide in, who we do both look to um, with business direction. So it's somebody who, who we we have full faith in. Um, and I just, I want to be really clear about that, that this is somebody that Dre and I both believe in wholeheartedly. Yeah. yeah. And here's the reality of the situation, folks. We're still on the Z-Track Productions. Z-Track Productions logo. Z-Track Productions logo. 
Still the same family, Z Track Productions. Find us on YouTube, Z Track Productions. Get, help us get to 100 subscribers, please, so we can customize our channel, Z Track Productions. Right. If no you're not a C. subscriber on YouTube, go to YouTube, subscribe. Ask go your subscribe right now. Subscribe. It's really fucking important. <laughs> it's yeah. just a little clicky click. I do clicky click. I love you, Mama. Uh, click. <laughs> All right, click ladies. Click. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this show down. What do you got to say for the final hour, for the final Wait, minutes? We love y'all. We've missed y'all. I'm super happy to be back. Um, stay tuned. Big shit is happening. Um, I know Dre and I have talked about um potentially doing a random viewer night, right? So <laughs> our plan is is we will reach out to somebody who we have noticed in the comments and bring you on the show. You'll be our guest for the night on the show. We're going to talk about what you want to talk about. So um, comment, like, subscribe, share, invite your friends. Um, hit us up. Look for the Patreon. It's coming. Uh, yeah, hit us. And sponsorships, Scott. Yeah, for sure. Like if you're interested in a sponsorship ad, contact me at uh, Ztrack Productions at gmail.com. That's Ztrack. That's Z T R A K. No C in Ztrack. Ztrack Productions at gmail.com. If you're interested in a sponsorship, hit me up there. We can talk about everything from just a plug uh, to giving you a formal video and a commercial that uh, we play ahead of the podcast. We can give you that airtime. Um, uh, we can talk about all those options all the way through. So hit me up. You know, uh, commercials are good. Yeah, thank you. Really good. And Thanks, look, dude. if you have an idea for a show, if you're looking to do something to get vocal, to get active, please reach out to Z Track as well. We're looking to expand the platform uh, yep. and grow the network. Always looking for new podcast ideas, ladies and gentlemen. So come on, hit me up anytime. All right, Dre. Is Awesome, you guys. Thanks so much, Aaron. Right, you guys. I miss you, Mama. Love Bye, you. Bye, behind the scenes producer. I love you. All right. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Here we night. go. Here night. we go.